In this video, I'm gonna make the same espresso using several different presets, several different espresso profiles built in the machine. And we can talk about um, how the results are different and we can look at the shots and see what we think, see what it comes out best. So the shot I'm gonna be making is always gonna use 15 grams of coffee and I'm gonna aim for about 30 grams out into the cup. The first shot we're gonna do, we're gonna do it with the default profile, which is here. And the default profile is our standard pre-infusion, rises to 8.6 bar, and then slowly declines to six bar. Let's see what that gives. Now, this is also at a temperature of 88 Celsius. Um, one thing I have forgotten to do is to put a cup here. That's definitely gonna make a difference. Uh, you notice that the scale tears automatically to zero. As long as you put a cup in before the espresso starts, you're fine. So here we are, the espresso is starting, the temperature is there running. I'm gonna click to zoom. The pressure is rising as pre-infusion ends. And then you can see the shot coming in. And we've risen to 8.5 bar. Here's the shot happening. Okay. Uh, the thing about this shot is that it has a pre-infusion and then it goes up to 8.6 bar and then slowly declines. Okay, and the shot's continuing, continuing, and it should stop shortly, automatically. Boom. Okay, 32 grams is what this was set to. Now, let's take a look at this shot and see what was good and what was not good about it. Now, what I can tell you is the flow rate here dipped down and then augmented as we went. Not hugely, uh, it looked pretty good, uh, but it did take a little bit of time here for the um, flow into the cup, which is the brown line, to match the flow that was going into the puck, which is the blue line. We'll also note the pre-infusion was fairly fast, uh, took 11 seconds. The pre-infusion on this espresso machine automatically exits when a certain pressure is reached. That's how it detects the end of pre-infusion. Um, and this is set to, let's see what it is set to. It is set to a four bar exit. Um, and that is in fact what happened is as we hit four bar, this line here, we switch to pressure shot, okay? Um, the other thing I'll note about this is that they did speed up and they went from about one mils per second to one and a half mils per second, but all in all, a actually fairly successful shot and you can see it uh, doesn't look bad at all. Let's now do the same shot, but with flow profiling. So this is the flow profile for milky drinks. This has the same pre-infusion speed. The main difference with this is this is a flow controlled shot. So instead of rising to 8.6 bar, it's going to try and maintain a two milliliter per second flow rate and the pressure will automatically be controlled. Now, this should look similar to the previous shot. Okay. But you can see our flow rate is just way too high on this, right? Because we were previously doing a one to one and a half mils per second flow rate. We're asking the machine to do two and it can't actually do it. So the pressure has gone sky high to 11 bar. And as the puck is degrading, the flow rate's able to pick up and the pressure decreases. So I would say this shot is too high pressure. Now I might like the flavor, but it's too high pressure. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to drop the goal flow rate for this shot. And we should be able to get into a pressure between seven and nine bar by doing that. Before we start, we're gonna change the flow profile so that this part here is a bit slower. Now remember we were between one and one and a half bars per second with the previous shot. So let's try and maintain that. Let's just pick a average between the two. The other thing is, is I'm not so happy about how fast that pre-infusion is happening. So I'm going to slow this pre-infusion down and all I'm doing there is slowing the rate of water flow into the puck during pre-infusion. Okay, so here's pressure rising and you see we're just a few seconds later to reach our end of pre-infusion, but actually not that different. And in fact, on this shot, I'm not that happy with this because see how long it took for the coffee to come out 
This is a slow rise in flow. Yet the flow, sorry, a slow rise in flow into the cup, whereas we are slow, there's a slow rise of water flow into the cup, yet a constant flow of water into the coffee puck. So if you look at this area here, that means that the coffee puck was extracting in an unequal, uneven manner because more water is coming in than coming out until about 25 seconds when finally the two are equal. So this to me is a pre-infusion that was not successful. Um, the other thing that's interesting about this is see how the pressure rose to eight bar. And then as the puck eroded, the machine automatically adjusted pressure down to 4.7 bar and then kept it there in order to maintain a stable flow. So the main thing I would do with this shot uh, that is different is I would slow down that pre-infusion still a little bit more because I would like to get rid of this gap between the blue and the brown line. So one more shot. As I mentioned a few minutes ago, we're gonna lower the pre-infusion flow here, but otherwise we're not gonna change much. So down again from 3.5 mils per second to three mils per second. And let's see if that helps pre-infusion uh, be more successful. Otherwise, no change. So here's pressure rising during pre-infusion. You can see it's taking longer for that pre-infusion to end. We were at about 14 seconds for that to happen. Um, and ah, a little bit better in terms of our brown to blue line, but still improvement could be made there. Now, probably that's because there's still some more water to come in. We could um, raise this trigger to seven bar and get pre-infusion to land a little bit longer. But nonetheless, I'd say this is a pretty successful shot. We rose to a little over eight bar, descended to a little under five bar, and it looks pretty good. Now the last shot I'm going to do is a pressure shot, and uh, that's what I mostly use for this coffee. And the reason is you're gonna see that because we're instead of decreasing from four mils per second to two mils, we're instead aiming for a pressure rise, that pre-infusion end is going to look a bit different. And we're gonna match the blue and the brown line much quicker. So the final one we're going to do now is the one I've been tweaking for quite a while. Uh, it is called the Eurocalf. Uh, it's called the Eurocalf profile. That's the name I gave it on my own machine. And the main thing you'll see here uh, is one, I have a pre-infusion exit that's higher than the others. Before it's been four bars, and now I'm exiting at six bars. So that pre-infusion is going to last just a few more seconds. Uh, the other thing that I'm doing is I'm then rising to eight bar of pressure and then slowly declining. Now, historically, this shot has been the best tasting of all the various techniques for this bean. And this is a medium roasted bean. It isn't burnt tasting, but it doesn't have light floral characteristics either. It's mostly chocolatey tasting. And I'm aiming for layers of pleasant chocolate, but no darkness. Uh, if I'm really lucky, I'll get some red wine flavor out of this as well. So here we are with our pre-infusion starting, the pressure starting to rise as pre-infusion is ending. And that is the longest pre-infusion of all of them. Fourteen, uh, about 13 seconds there for pre-infusion. You can see the blue and the brown line met very quickly and they're tracking each other. So this is an extraction where all the water in is yielding water out. We don't have an uneven extraction at all. And I have the pressure declining. I've timed this previously so that just as the flow is starting to rise at a higher level than I'm comfortable with, which in my case is one and a half mils per second, um, I then have the pressure starting to decline and that has the effect of lowering the flow rate both in and out. And that hopefully will give you an idea of the characteristics of different profiles on the Decent Espresso machine and how you might change it to establish the flavor that you're looking for.